it can take a long time to study trees. But over time, patterns emerge. This cut segment of a tulip poplar tree shows the tree was 100 years old when it died. Each ring marks one year, and the rings tell a story. You see the rings of, of there, some that are wide and some that are small. And the wide years are those where the growth was, was good for this tree. And the, the years where the rings are narrow, uh, the growth was slower. And it could have been for a variety of reasons, like being shaded by the neighbors. It could have been because there was a drought. There's a variety of possibilities. Jess Parker is the forest ecologist at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center in the mid-Atlantic state of Maryland. Greetings. Over the last 23 years, he and his team of volunteers have taken about a quarter of a million measurements on about 50,000 trees throughout the eastern United States. Each single tree was measured several times over the course of the study. 6.3. Parker has now published the study's preliminary results, results he says were surprising. What we discovered is the rate at which those forests are growing right now was much higher than we would expect from the long-term trend. Parker says most of the reasons behind the faster growth had to do with climate change. For example, uh, in the 23 years of our study, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has gone up 13 percent. In the same period, uh, the temperature, annual average temperature, has gone up three-tenths of a degree C. And the length of the growing season has uh, increased by about seven days. Parker says other forests around the world are showing a similar increase in their rate of growth. But so far, the total effects of changing the rhythm of the forest are not entirely clear. While the faster growth could lead to softer wood and even a shorter lifespan for some trees, it could also mean less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as more and larger trees process it. So the study continues. Point seven. Volunteers Ed Schmidt and Dale Morrow have been measuring trees for years. I uh, just whacked the tree so I know we've measured it already. Don Miller was a volunteer for years. Now, as a paid staff member, her job is to write down all of the collected data from every one of the trees in this group. A lot of my friends are jealous of my office. <laughs> Parker trains the volunteers and shares with them his extensive knowledge of the forest. On this day, he finds an old string tied around a tree. It cuts off the circulation and then uh, it, it can potentially kill the tree. 46.9, right there. Parker says the basic observation and repeated measuring of the trees brings a wealth of information. I try to measure it at the same height. I think it's right here, yeah. <laughs> Top of my park pocket. H is right here on me. <laughs> right right there. We've done a lot of tree hugging. For now, the group has finished hugging, or rather measuring, the trees in this 20 by 30 meter area. It is the third time they have measured these trees in a decade and time and again to leave a permanent mark of the plot with nylon string. They attach the string to the tape, roll up the tape, and leave the string in place. Okay, ready? Next week it will be another patch of woods, different trees, and perhaps other volunteers. They all know that studying the trees and understanding their many messages will take more than a generation. For producer Salima Palacio, I'm Francis Alonzo, VOA News.